Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Exciting day today. We're going to talk about how to paint with nitrocellulose lacquer. In specific, we're going to be talking about how to spray it. We're going to spray it on a guitar body. Oh yeah, everybody's surprised. Anyway, we're going to spray it on a guitar. Uh, we're going to talk about what you can do with it, what's good about it, what's bad about it, maybe a little bit, and uh, yeah, some of your options. And we're going to do a demo, because why not? That's what makes these videos interesting most of the time. So for starters, let's talk about what you're going to need. You're going to need a mask for sure, okay? This stuff is toxic. Wear a respirator. I'll put a link in the description, an affiliate link for a respirator if you don't have one and you, and you want to get one online. This is key. Another obvious one, if you're going to be spraying and you're not using spray cans, use a paint gun. You're going to need one of those. I'm going to put a link to the Warwick website. That's what I'm using for this. One, this is my favorite lacquer gun personally, the Warwick 904H. And uh, yeah, I'll put a link to the website in the description for that as well, uh, as well as a code, BRAD10%. You've probably all heard it before, BRAD, all caps, 10%. Uh, and that is gonna get you a 10% discount if you decide you wanna pick up a gun from there. If you've already got one, awesome, fantastic. If you don't want to use a gun because you don't have a compressor, you can't do that stuff, uh, my favorite spray can Nitrocellulose lacquer is the Bellin stringed instrument lacquer and uh, just for ease of reference I'll throw a link to that as well in the description in case you need one. But today we are going to be using a gun. We are still going to be using the Bellin stringed instrument lacquer. We're just going to use the version that comes out of a gun because it's you know easier to control, easier to spray and I think probably marginally better. So before we get into the demo let's talk lacquer. Lacquer is something that builds by melting into itself. It doesn't build in layers. You've probably heard me say this before, which means that you don't have to sand between coats, although a lot of people think you do. It's not a bad idea. If you're gonna let your lacquer dry for a good day or so, you can sand between coats if there are imperfections that you wanna sand out. There's nothing wrong with that, but it's not necessary for adhesion like it is with a lot of paints. Lacquer takes a long time to dry. Nitro generally takes about a month before it is technically ready to polish. You can do it sooner than that, but it's not recommended. Let it dry fully. It's gonna smell horrible for basically that entire time. That's another downside. And it's not as durable as say a polyurethane or a hardened enamel, but that in and of itself has its benefits as well. Lacquer gives you a different feel and it ages. Nitrocellulose lacquer tends to yellow over time. You can get relic uh, looks from it. You can cause cracking and uh, what we're called checking generally uh, by getting it really cold shortly after you paint it. All of that stuff is, you know, that's stuff that you can do with nitro that you can't do with, say, a polyurethane, which is the general other uh, product that's most common on guitars. Now, this particular guitar was painted exclusively with nitrocellulose. It had some work done under it. I'll be posting a video about this paint job in specific uh, because I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. But one nice thing about these lacquers is you can mix dyes into them very easily. Any kind of aniline dye, you can mix in pigments that are for lacquer as well. So this was a clear lacquer with a basically a candy dye in it that is designed to work on a polyurethane. Mixes just fine into the lacquer, no problem whatsoever. So generally when you spray your lacquers, you're gonna do it in thin coats, uh, thinner than your average polyurethane coat. Now, that being said, the overall finish build doesn't necessarily need to be thin. A lot of people like to build up, you know, 10 coats of clear so that they don't have to worry about burning through when they go to polish. You can get lacquers that are in satin, matte. They're pretty easy to polish up to a nice sheen. And one of the beautiful things about lacquers and something that I find is a huge benefit over a polyurethane, one of the few benefits, because personally I'm not a big fan of relic jobs, um, is that if it chips or something, it's easy to fix. Because it melts into itself, you can repair it, you can spot repair it by you know, blending it in with a little bit of reducer, or lacquer thinner rather, or spot filling it, and you can repair that to the point where it's completely invisible. Nicks, chips, much easier to deal with than lacquer. If they go through a transparent finish like this, then you're going to have problems because uh, where that ink doubles up, it's going to be darker. But generally speaking, on an opaque finish or a clear coat issue, much, much easier to fix than a polyurethane. So for today, I'm going to be using a pretty straightforward mix. It's going to be 50% lacquer, 50% thinner. There are different kinds of thinner available, but the general kind that you would get at the hardware store is perfectly adequate. Uh, the only real difference between them is, is how fast they flash and you want a relatively fast one when you're spraying a decent volume. So here's the lacquer thinner I'm using. If I were doing this in a particularly humid environment, and we have had this talk recently about weather, make sure it's warm, all right? Don't spray out in the sunlight, all that stuff I'm hoping you know, um, but those are the main ones. It's gotta be relatively warm, don't spray in direct sunlight, 
And if it's relatively humid, you're gonna wanna use some retarder as well, about 10% along with your 50-50 your mix. So obviously, you know, the math, 45, 45, and 10, uh, to make sure that your lacquer dries just a little bit slower and there's a chance for that humidity to come out as it's flashing. I assume you guys know what a 50-50 mix looks like, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and load it into the gun. I'm gonna throw the mask on. I'll wear gloves when I mix it, but probably not when I'm spraying, because I'm weird like that. And I'll get the compressor fired up. Uh, and yeah, let's get on to the demo. You're gonna see me use a fairly wide fan pattern. I'm gonna spray a light to wet coat, not medium like usual. I'm, I'm gonna keep it pretty gentle, at least for the first few coats of this. It's all lacquer so far, so we've got three coats on there all ready to get to the depth of color that I wanted. And now I'm gonna be building up eight coats over the next few days. The last key element to this is you don't wanna rush it, okay? Do a coat, two coats in a day, probably nothing more than that. A coat can be a couple passes, but really, if you build it up too fast, when it dries, it's gonna shrink and you're gonna get big cracks in your finish and presumably you don't want that, so don't do that. Take your time, some people take 10, 14 days to do their spray work on this, build up their 10 coats or so over that, and then they wait a month before they polish. Lacquer is not a fast finish. If you're looking for speed, you're gonna wanna go catalyzed, and that's not what we're using in this video. So that's about enough of me talking. Let's get to it. All right, guys, so as you can see, there is no magic to that. You simply put it on the normal way. Don't spray it too heavy. And uh, yeah, I did three passes right there one day. Not worried about it at all. This stuff's nice and dry, and it's only been probably five minutes. Now, I know I said earlier, lacquer takes a long time to dry. So let me clarify. It dries for a very long period of time. That is true. It takes about a month for the solvents to evaporate completely but nitrocellulose lacquer flashes off very quickly. So this is dry to the touch within a couple minutes usually. So we've got ourselves a nice coat here, a nice few coats, decent gloss so far. This is gonna be really easy to polish out. And that's really about all there is to it. It was gloss when I started, it's gloss now. There was no worry about the adhesion issue because it's lacquer. I just had to make sure that the surface was nice and clean, that's all. So as always, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, feel free to give it a thumbs up. I would appreciate that. And if you have any questions, post them in the comment section below and subscribe so hopefully you can see me answer them in a video like this one. But yeah, thank you for watching. We got lots of cool projects coming up, so stay tuned. Don't forget to check out the links in the description if you need any of the stuff that I used, and I will see you next time. Have a good one.